Hello, this is uh, number 56 of my postdoc chronicles and this is going to be short because I'm still going to do some uh, grocery uh, for the weekend. But before we dive into it, I'm going to show you here at the back of uh, uh, the TV in my screen here, the Volt Prime, a Warframe that is featured in the last uh, Prime Volt Access. So I got so enamored by this game, you know, I was about to delete it, but then I eventually got the within like 20, uh, around 20 hours in, I got the gameplay loot. I got how the grinding with the void fisher works and you know it's so addicting just cooking these warframes the only uh adv disadvantage is you, you can actually play this the entire game for free you know without paying anything but the only disadvantage with that is you are limited in the number of warframes that that you have you know you have these slots that are limited and in order to open them to have additional slots um you need to uh you need to buy them using this premium currency known as the platinum and you know, in principle, you don't have to do that. You can, you know, uh, buy a new Warframe and then sell the old one that you have. But I don't want that. I want to ha always have access uh, with the older Warframes that I have. So this this game being very beautiful that it is, it's like triple A level. I, you know, I had to support the, the devs behind the digital stream. So I, I bought the Prime Vault and one of the featured Warframes in the Prime Vault uh, a pack is this uh, Volt Prime. So basically, Prime Dwarf frames are that are like hyper versions of the vanilla, the original Warframe. So in the starting game, you you have a choice between three Warframes: Volt, Mag, and Excalibur. Volt is one of them, but basically his prime version, he has like 600 uh, energy, basically the mana versus the original one, which is a bit lower. And if I use Volt, I, I typically use uh, a lot of his skills most of the time. So I, I like that prime. That's why I, I bought it. And that's an act of support for the devs and buying like one uh, prime Volt access basically allowed me, you know, to open up a huge part of this game because now I'm not limited with the two, two Warframe slots that are initially available to me as well as the limited inventory slot. So every time I get the chance of, you know, farming new Warframes, I actually go for it right away because now I'm not, uh, I don't have a, a constrained number of uh, Warframe slots. But yeah, let's talk a bit about uh, Volt Warframe because for me so far, it's like the fastest Warframe that I've used. Um, Volt in and of itself, the, the, the vanilla one is already very fast because he has this speed skill, but this one, this guy takes it to an even insane levels because like I said, he had a greater mana pool so you can abuse that uh, speed all the time, but basically... Uh, if you have Warframes, then the unique thing about having a Warframe, different Warframes is that each of them, you know, plays very differently, just like, like different classes, for example, in Jablo, or it's like using different weapons in Monster Hunter. It's it's that same uh, uniqueness. It's that same diversity, you know, uh, feel that, that's brought about by changing weapons or changing class. It's just the same here. When you change Warframe, it's different. So the unique thing, thing about Volt, Volt is like a, the speedy class. So his, his first skill is basically like, electrify his enemies around him and then his second skill is the, the one i told about uh he will speed up and and the third skill that i really love is he has this you know shield that is made of electricity and it's, it's very useful against boss fights because uh boss that you know spam at you shooting at you you can just you put a shield on their face and then behind the shield you can shoot them and then not being affected by anything and and the amazing thing about the shield is when you shoot through the shield it adds uh you know an electricity element on your on your damage which is which is an, a very nice added bonus and finally his last skill which consumes like 100 mana so you basically can spam it if you're using volt prime is this thing called discharge where he you know explode into this huge uh discharge of electricity uh damaging and and if 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 it doesn't kill the enemies around him it stuns them you know and it gives you you know a chance to uh to spam like whatever weapon you have on their faces but it's very fascinating yeah so so far i've been playing this game a lot even though i'm so i'm so in love with super mario maker 2 me and my friends, you know, that we, we got uh, into this game because the nice thing is if you play this uh, multiplayer, there's like a built-in voice chat and all those things. You, you can actually uh, speak through the Nintendo Switch. So this this is the game that uh, me and my friends uh, back in the Philippines are playing right now. But anyway, going to the postdoc. So last uh, postdoc chronicles last week, I mentioned about uh, this thing about uh, matching and merging where... You know, you ask the question whether 
there is a need to to match uh, matrix elements to the to the those predicted by Parton showers because like I said before um, at at uh, high momentum uh, scales matrix elements gives a more correct prediction rather than the uh, part the ones given by the Parton shower however you know there are some cases the Parton showers they're, they're like uh, easy to simulate so there are some cases where you'd want to use um, just uh, pure Parton shower and so what we're what we're doing right now is we're investigating where whether if we adjust some uh, particular scales in our uh, part on shower whether it makes a huge difference because there are a lot of you know parameters that you can adjust in the part on showers which you don't want to affect the actual data because these are like you, you input this uh scales you know like the starting scale the factorization scale and stuff and uh uh, effectively, you know, as, as much as possible, you don't want your uh, processes to depend on what scales you, you you put in there. Okay, so what we're looking at is if if we just use pure part part of shower and then we play with these uh, various scales. In in particular, what we're we're looking at is the starting scale. Okay, where where the part on what what particular uh, momentum scale scale the the part on shower uh, would dominate. Um, if if we play around with this number. And then we, for example, plot let's say the momentum, uh, momentum distribution. Would it give different uh, momentum distribution? Because if so, then then that's bad. You know, you don't want you don't want a particular prediction to have you know to 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 give different sets of momentum distribution each time you play around with this um, starting scale. So in fact, again, I like I mentioned before, there's this paper that studied the compressed spectrum of SUSI where they played around with the Parton shower and then they showed that indeed it. It introduces a lot of uncertainty as you move to higher uh, momentum uh, spectrum. So what they did is what they showed basically is you have to use matching if you want to study these um, these particular models because the Parton shower behaves badly at you know at this high starting scale. So I did that with our MUED model. The the problem that I'm facing right now is so I, I did it I did it in two methods. There's like I, I found two ways to tweak the the different settings in the Parton shower. So this two the, the, the two settings that were used in the compressor spectrum they had a term for it they called it the wimpy setting and the power setting and basically the former the wimpy one basically rests on the default default setting of the parton shower where you set the starting scale of the shower equivalent to the uh, factorization scale you know basically the scale where the, the short of short physics or long physics is being divided. So if you want to read about it, it's a very fa very famous uh, uh, f uh, theorem in, in in hard scattering, you know, factorization where it, it's like it separates the regime where you can apply apply uh, perturbation, the perturbation techniques, and then the scale where you know perturbation uh, altogether breaks down, and you need to rely on models, uh, phenomenological models, to study uh, these things. Okay, so. The, the wimpy scale sets the, the, the starting scale of the parton shower equivalent to the factorization scale. And then they have this thing called the, the uh, power setting whereby the starting scale is, is allowed to, uh, basically the parton shower is allowed to you know, evolve in the full space space by, by setting the uh, starting scale equivalent to half of the uh, center of mass energy. So I did that. So, so, so what I did in the default scale, in the wimpy scale is that um, so one thing I did is I manually adjusted the uh, the uh, factorization scale because again this factorization scale will be the one that will be equivalent to the um, the uh, starting scale of the parton shower and what happens is I was able to reproduce the results in the compressed uh, SUSI model where they found some uncertainties where when you use a parton shower alone without the matching okay but then when I was I was like uh, playing around looking around whether this because this this thing, the power and wimpy stuff, this was introduced in like, I think 2007 or 2008. So I thought maybe in the uh, later models of PTA, they were able to, you know, introduce a toggle where you can, uh, you can automatically switch between these two, two settings, power and wimpy. So I, I found that, I found that thing. So the first thing I, I did is again, I manually adjust the, the, the starting scale and then I found a uncertainty. On the momentum spectrum but then if i use the built-in um pithia switch between power and wimpy the thing is wh when you i between power and wimpy I, when i again do the uh, momentum distribution i see no uncertainty at all so now i'm asking you know my collaborators uh jong and uh this guy roberto in spain I, and now i i need their opinion 
which should be the correct one because when I do the power and wimpy scale by uh, by manually adjusting the the starting scale within the within the Pythia uh, run card, I get the uncertainty just like the uh, compressed SUSI paper for our MUED. But then if I use the automatic toggle switch within the Pythia run card itself, I don't get the uncertainty. So now I'm asking them, which do you think should we believe okay because you know the, the the is it the automatic implementation of the power of or wimpy or is it the is it the uh is it the actual scale because you know depending on which of these two are correct we would be proceeding differently if the if the uh the the result according to the manual adjustment of the the starting scale is correct then we again just like the compressed UC, we would have to use matching when we study our models but if the automatic uh, scaling found within Pythia is correct between power and Wimpy, then we we can just rely on the part on shower altogether without the matching for the matrix elements. Because again, in that particular uh, instance, I see no uncertainty at all. So I'm still waiting what they think about it, but I don't, I don't really, so far I, I'm, I'm trying to think which, which one is better, but you know, both seems like you know the correct way to do it but both give a different result so i'm still waiting for what they what they think about it okay but anyway yeah I, i'm still gonna go to my uh to do some grocery this has been post the chronicles in the next post the chronicles expect me you know to instead of um usually i feature different um switch games but since currently i am addicting this game called warframe then i'll be featuring different warframes that i've already used i've already maxed and then talk about their different skills and what they do. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.